Hello and welcome to Uli Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Scorpio. Scorpio is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign. Then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's see what these tea leaves have to say today. Okay, okay, and our card for this reading is the Five of Discs. And so, this has a little, a little bit to do with um, some worry, right? Some kind of inner fear, anxieties. Um, I think kind of, uh, a feeling of some crisis, maybe uh, at least the perception of crisis. I don't know that there's actually a crisis, but we'll look and see. Okay. So. All right, so I feel like, and I want to start here. Oh, I can't tell if my eyes are getting blurry or if the thing's blurry on here or, or if my glasses are. <laughs> my glasses, sometimes I wake up in the morning, I put my glasses on and I'm like, oh my God, is there a fire in here? It's because they're so, they get so um, just dirty. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, so we have, it looks like a person here holding some kind of um, maybe a vase or some kind of cup or vessel for a liquid, and it looks like it's pouring out, okay? Um, and then we, oops, and then we have an animal kind of over here grazing. Um, beneath, we have a person who is, Standing here, holding a bowl, catching the water that is coming out of this cup. So, this is a really profound picture to me. Um, it really makes me think that there is this sense of um, an immediate need to kind of, uh, you know, um, hurry up and get and get this over with get you know get I want to I don't want anything else to do with this I'm done I'm done I'm done okay um I think that you know there is something ending there has been something ending for a while and we've talked about this in other readings I think that there is still a lingering sense of volatility okay I don't this doesn't surprise me no offense to you, Scorpio. You all are pretty emotional beings and you do not hide it. Um, nothing wrong with that though, right? <laughs> no judgment. Um, I think that your intuition about some of your choices. I'm not, it's not that they've been wrong, right? It's not wrong. I think that they've been very intense, okay? And um, I think part of that is the emotionality feeding into, um, into your thinking, right? So it amplifies some of these um, understandings that you are coming to. Um, I think that's why we have this sense of hurry up and, um, you know, get this thing over with. just kind of almost frantic. Okay. Also a sense of all or nothing, right? Very dualistic kinds of thinking, black and white thinking as they like to call it. Um, you know, and I think that ultimately this end had to come and you know that I think that you initiated it um 
because you know it just whatever it is it wasn't working if this is a job a relationship a living situation you know whatever um a friendship And even though you knew and you know, it still is affecting you emotionally. Of course, of course it would, right? It would affect anybody. Now, here's the thing, though. We have to gather, gather ourselves, right? Find some grounding, don't let it take you away. A tsunami of feelings. I think that it is easy. And I think this because I relate to this myself. It is easy when we have these big fundamental changes in our life and we are feeling very emotional we get to where uh, you know um you want to cut all ties you want to get rid of it all oh you know um you're in a position where you have to move well fine i'm just gonna get rid of all my things and just go you know these very extreme and i i understand these very well <laughs> Boy, do I. Um, but we have to temper ourselves because we can easily get swept away in all of it. And then we get on the other side. Whew, right? And so I see down here we have a person catching the waters. And I think this is the other part of yourself. Right? Catching all of that that stuff the the um energies the um well you know sometimes we have to compartmentalize like how we feel about things sometimes we do we have to put up that wall but then there's still that little part of ourself that keeps all of the overflow things that we cast away right so that we may look at it later we may um you know return to this thing process transmute it and so there's that flow up and down There's that even flow. And if you think about that, if you think about those waters flowing from the macro to the micro and to the micro to the macro, from the conscious to the unconscious, back and forth, wading into that water, going along with that current Letting things be as they are, just for a little while. Trusting that the universe will provide for you in the ways that you need. And so we come to this animal grazing beneath the sun, out in the field. The sky is wide. These open lands. There's so much opportunity here. And sometimes we have to clear out parts of our life. We have to let go of things. We follow our intuition, even if we kind of have a little bit of a fit going along with it. I don't know how I'm not a Scorpio. I almost wonder if somebody lied to me about... <laughs> when I was born, um, because I, you know, a lot of the common attributes of a Scorpio, I think I have a lot of those, at least in the emotional sectors. 
a little bit resistant to the change, yet almost always the one initiating the change. Some kind of internal turmoil conflict? Why? I don't know. But it happens. You know, it's like that feeling, I'm going to go, but I'm not going to have fun if I do, right? <laughs> well, we have a heart right here, okay? And I was trying to decide, what are these? It looks like two people. Okay, and it almost looks like one is like climbing up the side of the other one. Um, you know, and I feel like there is a sense of merging here. Um, not, it doesn't feel smooth, okay, but it feels like it is happening. And I feel like these, um, you know, the pain, the anxiety, the lament. The big, big feelings that have come from the situation that has kind of come back in waves, right? And maybe dealing with some of the, the different variables, um, more decisions being made, some difficulties, whatever. Um, it brings these feelings right back up to the surface. But I think your ability... Your ability to kind of weather your own feelings, to weather the situations that kind of get you into this place, um, you're so good at it. And um, it might not always look like that to other people, but you are because you're a survivor. And when you get on the other side of it, you make good use of whatever you've learned in the situation. You also are really good at taking the things that happen, the fragments of things you learn, your experiences, your impressions, and putting them into something creative. You are a fortified being. You are somebody who can make something so beautiful out of the remnants of something else. Okay, and that is a rare ability. You just, you just must be careful with yourself not to let, really, it's not, I don't feel like it's other people. It's, you have to be careful to not let your own feelings devour you. You have to be your biggest advocate. <laughs> you have to be the one that takes care in these deep, deep places. Nobody else can go there. But I think you already know that. You know that. And I feel like we have the, these anxieties subsiding. I feel like there is, you know, there it's, it's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more of this until we get to a place. And now I see a person sitting here and a person sitting here. And now I know I'm talking about multiple people, um, in these images, but I think these are different aspects of self merging together. Okay, refinement of self, trying to um, self-soothe, bring down those emotions, ground yourself, get stabilized again. Um, I see here two, two beings embracing. I see two beings sitting here. I feel like there's a peaceful atmosphere. We have a large bird here, a small bird here. And he, this one looks like a cardinal, okay? Maybe a little bit of a 
a chubby cardinal. Maybe it's cold. You know, they kind of ball up a little bit. Um, but I do think this is a message for you. There's somebody who loves you, who looks over you, um, watches over you, um, you know, kind of always in your corner. They're always there. Um, it, and it seems maybe they've passed, they've transitioned. Um, but I think that you feel them and, um, kind of, you know, reminding you because this is close to that, that place where, um, they are, these two are sitting and I feel like almost, you know, practicing mindfulness, doing postures that, um, you know, kind of bring your blood pressure down, your breathing slowing a little bit. And, um, I feel that this person is kind of reminding you, Hey, do your, do your breathing. Take a little moment for yourself. Okay. So this thing really, I got to fix Every time the cats jump up here, this whole tablecloth goes a little bit this way. So I got to <laughs> pull it back, I think. Um, okay, so, and I'm going to pour that so I don't get it everywhere. Um, we have a little hummingbird sitting here on the side of a log. And um, we have the uh, illuminating candle flame blowing this way in the wind. So... I do feel like there is a sense of getting to that calm, but also your mind, you are ready to do a lot of different things. I mean, I feel like after this, this intense, oh, trying to figure out, you know, the logistics of something, um, whatever your anxiety, whatever's brought your anxiety to a peak, once this starts to subside, you're bringing yourself into a more calmed place. There's that clear, open meadow field, whatever, um, ready for you to start your next projects, you know, getting the tasks that you need to done, um, you know, enjoying yourself. And so this little hummingbird will be off again, taking off into, um, you know, doing its good work. Now, the candle that is blowing. It's not out, right? The illumination is being kind of dispersed a little unsteadily, but that's okay. It will come back to center. Be patient, okay? Just be patient. It will make itself clear. It will. You can't force these kinds of things. You can, the best you can do is kind of create an environment and conditions that are conducive with receiving, you know, cosmic inspirations, divine messaging, and so on. Okay, so we're going to look at the Earthbound Oracle cards. And we have, these cards are a little different than the last ones I was using. Um, these have an image and a word, and they kind of just are going to punctuate um, whatever, you know, some part of this reading or all of it. And we're going to go ahead and just stop where it feels right. Okay, and... Okay, yeah, we have that fear. Um... We have the fear card and we have the rabbit with the arrows kind of, you know, not, it doesn't look like it, they have pierced, but they are coming. So there is that, that running. Now I'm going to go again. That's, we already know that feeling is very potent here today. Voice. Okay. I like that. So I think that really what's going to come, you know, come to your aid here is using your ability to create. And this is what I'm talking about. You are really good at taking, um, taking whatever is happening, whatever is causing this fear, anxiety, going through it, going through it, starting to process some of the information and using it through processes of creativity, sublimation, 
to create something that is not only profound, but empowering. This is how you overcome that fear, right? Making use, making use of it. All right. So, oops. Oh, here we go. Here's some bounce. This one just flicked itself. <laughs> so you get three today. We have a bounce. This one's interesting. I haven't seen this one yet. Kind of an interesting uh, deer and has a spider web. Everything in balance, right? Everything in its place. We'll find that again. We'll get there. We'll get there. We're getting there. All right. Okay, Scorpio. I'm going to say thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. If you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm. The algorithm is the thing that kind of decides, uh, you know, what these videos are going to do, how far the reach is going to be and so on. So, um, we like to give it the engagement that it wants. And those are things like liking the video, watching the readings from the beginning to the end, sharing the readings on other social media platforms. Other than that, if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. You can hit the little bell when you do, it'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. We're coming up on about a, I think it's, it has to be in the next month, next few weeks. Um, a year of this channel, um, being in existence. <laughs> so that's really fun. And I'm hoping that we can celebrate that by getting to 20 K subscribers. We are, I don't know where we're at exactly. I think maybe, um, close to, well, yeah, almost to 19,000 people subbed. Um, but I think we can totally do that 1K before the one year anniversary. I have to figure out exactly when that is. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So anyways, I, you know, I owe you all so much appreciation and I have it in my heart, in my soul. Um, this channel would be nothing without all of you. And, um, you know, so if you want to leave a comment too, Please do. I read all of them. They mean so much to me. I love hearing from you all. I love hearing about what's going on, how you're doing, um, how you're feeling, all of that. All right, Scorpio, we will talk in just a few days. I love you. Keep your head up. Keep doing the good work. I know that you, I know that you are. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.